dear parents, brothers and sisters and little children, hope and pray that all of you are keeping in good health, in happiness and in peace. Wish you all a very happy feast of Corpus Christi. Our feast of the body and blood of Christ, Corpus Christi, is meant to strengthen our faith in the real, uh, total, and substantial uh, presence of the Lord in the Eucharist. As we celebrate this solemnity of uh, Corpus Christi, we really accept the Eucharist is the very source and summit of Christian faith for Eucharist sustains our spiritual life. In the description about the Last Supper, in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and also in the first letter to Corinthians, and especially in John's Gospel, Jesus is most clear in telling us that the Eucharist is, the, is his, truly his body and blood. John chapter 6, 53 to 54, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up the last day. Yet many people, many of us, try hard to explain uh, these very direct words of uh, Jesus, this is my body and this is my blood, because sometime, most of the time we are failing to see the real presence uh, in the Eucharist. We fail sometimes. Uh, they sometimes we forget the words of uh, uh, Jesus to Thomas, blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. John chapter 20, verse 29. My dear friends, I know uh, you, we all believe, otherwise we will not be here. I am sure that you and I have this great, great desire within uh, to strengthen every day that belief, that faith in the real, total, and substantial presence of the Lord in the Eucharist, and hope and pray that our prayers today, our reflections, our music, and everything will help each one of us to strengthen that faith. We believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist because Jesus promised it after miraculously feeding the 5,000. Because Jesus instituted the Holy Eucharist at the Last Supper. Because Jesus commanded his disciples to repeat it in his memory. Do it in memory of me. And you and I firmly believe that Nothing is impossible for God. We believe, my dear friends, the real transformation that takes place during the consecration. Now the question is, what is happening in the, uh, during the consecration? The prayer will be the priest will be beginning the prayer of consecration after preparation of the gifts on the altar. You, especially from the second Eucharistic uh, prayer, make holy. Your priest will keep the hands, make holy. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of Christ. So that part is called a transubstantiation. Have you heard about that term? Transubstantiation, which means 
the substance of the consecrated bread and wine is changed into the substance of the risen Jesus glorified body and blood by the action of the Holy Spirit. That is why we bring, we ask the help of the of Holy Spirit. Mark in the Gospel has this description of the institution of the Eucharist within the context of the Passover meal that we see in the Old Testament. Mark associates the dying and passing of Jesus with the Passover event. In Jesus, those who have been enslaved by sin are freed. They pass over from sin to forgiveness, healing, and new life. In dying, Jesus became the perfect sacrifice, the ultimate paschal lamb by whose blood we are delivered from death. A new covenant is established between God and each one of us. To eat the flesh and to drink the blood of Christ is to take in the whole person, not the little of Jesus. We are taking in the whole person to take Jesus in, and it is a challenge for us to become a transformed people. That is why every prayer, every moment we sit for prayer, and every moment we celebrate the Eucharist, every moment we receive the communion will transform us in this eating and drinking we are brought to the communion with the Christ and with the whole body of Christ. And it is a very challenging, my dear friends, for us to accept Jesus' gift as bread. And it is continued to be a challenge for each one of us sometimes, because not because of any uh, problems, but because sometimes we lose faith. Sometimes we doubt our own faith rather than believing in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. And it is said that by my spiritual director and a retreat preacher, Father Gus, Eucharist is the sacred meal of communion. Eucharist is the sacred meal of togetherness and of thanksgiving. Eucharist is of total giving. I am sure, my dear parents, you all work every day every day, 24 hours, to give totally uh, for the well-being and welfare of uh, your own children. And the fruits we can see, the graduated students and all the other uh, children who are growing in spirit of wisdom and knowledge at the same time, love and reverence for fellow human beings. This Eucharist invites us to fulfill fulfill our duties with great strength. And let us have, every time we attend Mass, let us have this joy-filled celebration. Now, can we, how can, the question is different now, after explaining a little bit of uh, theological uh, meanings and uh, backgrounds of Eucharistic celebration and the real presence of Jesus, now we will we will just think how can be motivated to receive communion every day or whenever, whenever we have a chance. I like to say this story of Blessed Imelda as we celebrate this great feast, and that will be my conclusion. Very recently, very recently, last month, we celebrated the first communion so many of our little, little children received Jesus in the Eucharist for the first time. It was a big celebration. Blessed Imelda, the patron saint of first communicants. Have you heard about Blessed Imelda? Imelda Lambertini. Huh? Not a Lamborghini, huh? Lambertini. A tini, huh? Yeah. So it is the story. Blessed Imelda, 
the patron of first communicants. Blessed Imelda Lambertini had a very remarkable experience of this love that we receive from the Eucharist. She lived in Bologna, Italy in the 1300s, not exact date is not given. She had, won she had wanted to be a nun from the time she was a little girl and she joined the Dominican convent at the age of nine. Uh, to better prepare herself for the day when she would take the habit. Her greatest desire was to receive Holy Communion. But in those days, you, have, you had to be at least uh, 12 years old to do so. Imelda begged for an exception to the rule, but the chaplain refused. She kept praying for special permission. Her prayers were miraculously answered on the Feast of the Ascension in 1333. After Mass, she stayed in her place in the chapel where one of the nuns was putting away the sacred vessels. Suddenly, the nun heard a noise and turned towards Imelda. Imelda was sitting there, and the sister was doing something, and suddenly she heard the noise hovering in mid-air in front of Imelda as she knelt in prayer was a sacred host. Simply to say, a sacred host appeared just in the air in front of Imelda. The Blessed Eucharist, shining with bright and forceful light. The frightened nun ran to find the chaplain. By the time the chaplain arrived, the rest of the nuns and other onlookers had crowded, awestruck or wondered at the event in the, in the chapel. When the priest saw the shining, hovering host, he put on his vestments, went over to the girl, took a miraculous, took the miraculous host in his hands and gave her Holy Communion. Some minutes later, after the crowd had dispersed, the Mother Superior came, to, came over to little Imelda to call her for breakfast. She found the girl still kneeling with a smile on her face. But, you know, Imelda was already dead. She had died of love in ecstasy, ecstasy after receiving Christ in the Eucharist. He had longed to be with her even more than she had longed to be with him. Blessed Imelda's body is incorrupt, and you can still see it today in the church where she is placed or interred in Bologna. She is the patron saint of First Holy Communicants. So you can check it. There is a graphic picture for all the little children to watch. And it is an a conclusion for us. It is really challenging each one of us on this feast day. Let us really appreciate, my dear friends, the real presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist by receiving him with the true repentance of our sins. And that is why every Eucharist prayer, Eucharist is started with this act of contrition, act of contrition, asking God to forgive us for our sins and transgressions. Let us be Christ bearers, conveyors. By receiving Holy Communion, we become the Christ bearers, as Mary, our mother, was with the duty of conveying Christ to others and to home especially and in the workplace. Let us, let us show to others that Christ is dwelling within us through our love, mercy, forgiveness, for one another in the family and in the community and through our humble and sacrificial services. 
Lastly, let us offer our lives to the altar along with Jesus' sacrifice, asking pardon for our sins and expressing gratitude for the blessings we have received and presenting our needs and petitions on the altar every day. Amen. Now let us all stand for the profession of faith. <laughs>